it's not only hackers who can gain access to, to your phone. It can be an, an ex-girlfriend or your girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, jealous people, friends, parents. Conversation with a hacker. An interview between Greg and Lewis about privacy, security, and other mysteries. No bullshit. Okay, cool. The first thing uh, it would be good to start with uh, to define what two-factor authentication is uh, and what's what's the need for it, basically. Okay, so two-factor authentication is a uh, is a secondary information you have to enter when you connect to uh, to your account. Uh, so user case is uh, I go into my email account, so I enter my email, I enter my password, and then I click connect, and the, the server is going to ask me for an additional information that in general is presented um, into a six-digit form, and it changes every 30 seconds. So I enter this information, and I get access to my, uh, to my account. This is done to prevent uh, somebody gaining access to uh, your information if your password gets stolen from a mass targeted attack, like uh, somebody stole a database and there is your password inside, or if somebody gets access to your password by uh, looking over your shoulder when you enter it, or stealing your phone, etc. Depending on how you configured your two-factor authentication, is going to, you're going to get this information on an app or on a physical device, or on your phone. It's also, you can use a, a SMS two-factor authentication. So there's a lot of different apps who do this kind of thing. I, I think the most famous one is Google Authenticator. Um, once you've done that, one, when you're going to log in to your account, it's going to ask you for your user and your password. And then you're going to have a next step once you, once you enter uh, these two information, is to enter the number generated by the, the app. So you go into your app, you, and you're going to see all the numbers for all the different accounts you have and you just copy and paste. These numbers, these numbers change every 30 seconds. So even if, I, if somebody gets access to this number on the network, he's not going to be able to reuse it again. It's an extra step of security that's not really uh, hard to do or painful to do, and it's going to protect you a lot more. So I really recommend it uh, that you set up these things everywhere. The point of two-factor uh, authentication, according to you, is, is because it's a very safe way uh, to uh, secure yourself and minimizing the probability that someone hacks into your account. But if um, if this authenticator app is installed on my phone and someone has access to the inside of my phone, surely uh, that means that my two-factor authentication is not that safe. Yes, so <clears throat> mass targeted attack and personal attack are a little different. Uh, mass targeted attacks are going to steal a password from somebody uh, that uh, the password from a database, from a company, or some or somewhere on the internet. So, if your password is not strong enough, or if you have the same password everywhere, uh, you're going to be at risk. So, having set up two-factor authentication is going to prevent uh, to prevent the the people who gain access to your password to connect to your accounts. However, in a targeted attack, it means I'm I'm coming after you personally. It's uh, the two-factor authentication is a little more complex because if I hack your phone and you have your two-factor authentication on your phone, I mean, I'm going to be able to access your, your codes. So it's not going to be uh, very useful. So is it, there is some, some tricks uh, when you actually want, want to uh, secure yourself from targeted attack. The main trick is um, set up your two-factor authentication and have it somewhere offline. So the best case scenario is having a device. It's better because the device is not going to get to anything, so you can read uh, your two-factor authentication code on the device and then enter it into something connected to internet. Um, but yes, yeah, that's the best case scenario. If a trick is you can, for example, if you have an old phone that uh, hangs around, you can you can use the old smartphone. You can remove all the Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth connection and everything, and just uh, install the app on the old smartphone, so it's not connected to internet, and use this as a secondary device. I really recommend you to have an offline device uh, with uh, your two-factor authentication. So you can, there is different kind of, uh, there's a lot of different range of devices. Uh, you have, uh, for example, RSA ID, that's quite good, but it's not really compatible with everything. You have YubiKey, which is an offline device that you plug into your computer when you want to use it. Uh, YubiKey is like $40, uh, so it's not really expensive. You can actually 
just buy one and you will be a lot safer. The second thing is also, I think we'll talk about it in another video, but don't let your phone, don't lend your phone to other people and, and put a strong password on it and everything. So it's not only hackers who can gain access to, to your phone. It can be a, an ex-girlfriend or your girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, jealous people, friends, parents. I, I have had a, a lot of people asking me to hack stuff. They were normal people, you know, they were actually co-workers trying to hack somebody else from the office to, to gain access to some information. So if you're a normal person, the people that are going to come after you in general are people around you. They, they're most likely to grab your phone and see you enter your password than anything else. So that's why it's quite good to have a two-factor authentication uh, to prevent a lot of things like that. Uh, the problem is if you install an app, they're going to grab your phone. They're going to, uh, to access your phone. So they're going to be able to access the app. So it's going to, it's, it's going to remove any of the protections that gives you two-factor authentication on a targeted attack. What, what you need to do is have it offline. Okay, so you would recommend taking this offline uh, device and storing it somewhere else uh, physically uh, so that you minimize the chance of someone actually being able to, uh, to hack into uh, any of your accounts. Yes, uh, two-factor authentication uh, on, on a connected devices on the internet because it's going to protect you very well from mass targeted attack. It's not going to protect you that much from personal targeted attacks. So that's why you need a two-factor authentication that is offline, that the device it's on is not connected on the internet. And also have it all the time on you, for example, on your kitchen or something, uh, because if somebody steals it, uh, again, it's the same, same kind of problem. Uh, also, something that is um, used a lot uh, as two-factor authentication is a phone number. They send you an, an SMS or an email. So basically, you, you have two kind of two-factor authentications that are not safe, that is email and SMS. Um, companies that ask you for your phone number for security so they can send you a code to log in, uh, it's not really safe. And they do that because they want to identify you more than actually they want to protect you. So I, will, I really do not recommend to give, uh, if you can choose something else, don't give your phone away because it's a very good identifier of, uh, of person and it's used to track you quite well. And uh, as two-factor authentication code, using an SMS on your phone number is quite bad because there is a lot of different techniques to get access uh, from a distance to this SMS. The second thing is email. For example, from, uh, from mass targeted attack, not that much, but from personal targeted attack, uh, people are going to be able to access your email account. So having a two-factor authentication send uh, to you by email is not going to be really useful. In your devices, for example, especially on your phone, you have your email automatically automatically connected without any passcode or anything. So you just click on the email and you're going to get access to, to two-factor authentication. So that's why it's not really good. Um, two-factor authentication always offline, whatever happens. That's the best way to, to be safe. Also, always on yourself. Put it on your kitchen on something you have all the time on you. Okay, so it, it seems in your in your recommendation and tips, there's some kind of a hierarchy uh, on, let's say, on the, on how protected you can be uh, and the convenience. Because the first level would be the most unsecure level, which is just having uh, one password to access my account, which is making it very easy uh, for anyone to uh, uh, to get access or to hack into. Then you mentioned two-factor authentication, uh, where you get sent uh, an, an SMS or an email. Uh, which means that you don't have to buy an offline device, but which makes you less protected uh, uh, as well, but more protected than if you just had a password. And then you've got the third level, which is, is it, let's say you need to sacrifice a bit more convenience in the, same, in, in the sense that you must carry another uh, device uh, you, and, that you must, uh, and, that, and that you must pay for, but that's, that's the most secure way you can have, basically, for the, let's say, for the average user. Uh, yes, so... Um... You have one in between. So first would be just password. Uh, second will be email or SMS. Third will be using an authenticator app, which is a little better than SMS and password, uh, be because yeah. SMS and uh, sorry SMS and email. So SMS and email can be accessed from a lot of places. Uh, the authenticator app can only be accessed from your phone. So I need to hack your phone or to steal your phone. And the the fourth one is offline devices like Eresa. Um, GBKey or having your old smartphone offline with the app, which is actually the best way you can use uh, two-factor authentication. Okay, well, 
thank you uh thank you once again for that and uh feel free uh to comment below guys if you have any questions all right thank you guys subscribe to the podcast and stay tuned for next week's episode on conversation with a hacker